Hi everyone, and welcome to Camp Create Session 2. I hope you're as excited for today's activity, Inlaid Made Easy, as I am. So inlaid die cutting is a super fun way to create depth and dimension without the actual bulk of dimension, which makes your projects way more postage friendly. Let's get started. So the basic premise behind inlaid die cutting is that you start with the die cut that's in the foreground, or the furthest from the front of your design, and end with the die cut that you want in the forefront, or the closest image to the front of your design. So you can see that I'm laying out the dies on my image panel to get an idea of where I want everything to be, and also know where I need to start my die cutting. To start off, I die cut all of the images for my design from four different pattern papers. All the products I'm using in today's video will be listed below in the description box. I initially thought that I wanted to back the pattern paper die cuts with a heavier cardstock, but I changed my mind. So just ignore those white die cuts in the upper right hand corner. So I started the inlaid part of my design by die cutting the cloud in the upper left hand corner because it's the image in the foreground. Once I remove the die cut from the image panel, I need to back that opening with some lightweight typing paper that I've covered with tape runner adhesive. I'll place that behind the aperture and then adhere the blue and white stripe cloud inside. I also trimmed away the excess printer paper with my scissors to get rid of the bulk. The next die I need to cut is the sunshine die. I just lay that on top of the design where I want it to be and die cut it off camera. I'll remove the negative of the die cut and adhere more printer paper and tape runner behind it. Then I can adhere the yellow polka dot sunshine in its place. It's important to keep the bulk on the back of your image panel to a minimum and you'll see why later on in the video. I just use my scissors to trim away the excess after each die cut is put in place. And you can use any kind of adhesive that you like. I just like tape runner for this process because it's easy and I don't have to clean up any oozing along the way. Inlaid die cutting is really easy to do. And once you get the hang of it, I think it's kind of fun to figure out other ways to incorporate it into a design. I'm creating a sunny sky scene here, but you can do this technique with any die cut images. Okay, so now I need to die cut the next cloud from the image panel. And I just lay it on top of the sunshine and die cut it off camera. Then I'll remove the negative of that cloud, adhere the sticky printer paper behind the aperture, and place the second cloud die cut in place, making sure to trim off the excess printer paper with my scissors. Are you starting to see a pattern of my madness yet? My scene is starting to take shape. The upper left hand cloud looks like it's off in the distance, the sunshine is in the front of it, and the second cloud is in front of the sunshine. I just keep die cutting in order from back to front, removing the parts of the die cut that would normally be in the background and replacing them with the die cuts that should be in front of them. It's really pretty simple once you understand the logic of it all. Okay, now that the second cloud is in place, I want to overlap the third cloud die with the second cloud. This will create a great grounding area for my sentiment. But you can see now why it's important to keep the bulk to a minimum on the back of your image panel. I'm now die cutting through several layers of paper. Honestly, there's not too much you can do about it unless you want to be super fastidious about not overlapping the printer paper on the back. I'm kind of lazy, so even though I tried to keep the bulk to a minimum, it was still hard to cut through all the layers for the third cloud. I just used my detail scissors to trim away the part of the die cut that was being a little stubborn. No big deal. I can now add that third cloud die cut in place, and here's where I want to die cut the word for my sentiment. I'm using the new little hello dynamics to cut the word hello from both of the bottom clouds. And again, you'll see that I'm die cutting through several layers of printer paper. So I'll need to use my detail scissors again to cut the negative die cut away from the image panel. It's a little tedious, but an important part to keep that hello negative die cut intact because we'll need the inside parts of the word to fill in later. Now that I've released that hello word die cut from the image panel, I can use my detail scissors to remove the rest of the inside portions of the layer die cut. Be sure and set those aside someplace safe because we'll need them in a minute. Here, I'm just cleaning up the outside edges of those interior pieces with my scissors so that they'll fit perfectly. While I continue to remove those necessary inside pieces, let's chat more about the possibilities for inlaid die cutting. It's a great technique for building scenes. Winter scenes, beach scenes, and city scenes. It's also a fun way to give multi-layered flowers depth and dimension without adding bulk. I'm excited to try this technique with the Perfect Poinsettias Dynamics for some of my holiday cards. 
Don't get me wrong, I love a good bit of dimension in my cards. In fact, I probably use more dimensional foam squares than anyone on the planet. But I love the illusion of depth and dimension that the inlay die cutting technique gives you, and I love to save money on postage. So, it's a win-win in my book. Okay, I'm finally ready to put the Hello Word die cut in place. And because the Word die cut has other parts that need to fit inside of it, I'm being really careful about the position of the die cut. The lightweight and flimsy nature of the pattern paper can sometimes cause it to lay down improperly. So I just want to make sure I don't bend it or lay it in a way that those inside pieces won't fit in properly. And once I have those interior pieces in place, I'll use my Teflon bone folder to really burnish all of those die cut pieces in place and make sure that everything is laying down flat. And while I was using my Teflon bone folder to burnish the die cuts, I noticed that there was one area of the sunshine that didn't completely adhere to the printer paper. So I just added a bit of liquid adhesive to the back of that die cut to make sure it solidly adhered. I trimmed a piece of rainbow stripe pattern paper to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I'm adhering it to my A2 top holding card base. And to make sure that the pattern paper is adhered to my card base perfectly, I'll lay the base inside my scoreboard and use the top and left edges to align the pattern paper. Just a little trick I learned that I thought I'd share with you all. And just so you won't think I'm some kind of imposter doing your video today, I added some foam squares to the back of my image panel and I'll adhere it to my card base. I guess I'm a foam square girl to the core. Okay, I wanted to add a stamp word to my sentiment, so don't freak out, but I'm gonna cut apart one of the sentiments from the Essential Sentiment stamp set. As long as you're careful, it's okay to cut apart your clear stamps. I promise you'll still be able to use them again. And doing this makes your stamps so much more versatile. I'm stamping the word beautiful onto a scrap of black licorice cardstock using Sweet Tooth Pigment ink, and then I'll heat emboss it off camera with some white embossing powder. I love the impact of the white against the black. I'll use one of the skinny sentiment strip dynamics to die cut the word, and to customize the size of the strip, I'll use the partial die cutting technique to cut away the excess cardstock around the stamped image. I'm adhering the sentiment strip to the image panel just below the word hello. And yes, I'm using foam squares to adhere it. I could have inlaid it to stay true to the concept I'm teaching today, but I just love the pop that foam squares add to a design. And as a final detail, I'm adhering some clear drops to my design using some quick drying clear liquid adhesive. It's those little details that really give a card that wow factor. And there you have it friends, inlay die cutting the easy way. I hope you enjoyed my lesson today and that you'll give this inlay die cutting technique a try for yourself. Of course, there are prizes involved, really great prizes, especially if you participate in all five of this session's Camp Create activities. I can't wait to see what you all come up with. Please let me know if you have any questions about today's activity in the comments below, and be sure and come back tomorrow for your next Camp Create activity. Have a great day.